I think, okay, I have to make a move. So I track him and I go and flank him. But oh my god, the artillery is behind me. Oh my god, I have to use this guy as cover. Oh, the artillery misses, luckily. Oh god. But the VK manages to repair his tracks. I have to face him now to bounce a shot. Luckily, I do. I have to flank this guy again to take him out now. The M12 is doing his own thing. He's reloading. This is VK is far more dangerous. Taking him out now. So, using this wreck as cover against the M12 now. He is probably reloaded by now, but I will be able to put in a clean shot there. Luckily, the enemy artillery misses. Greetings guys, this is Dogcraft and welcome to this new episode of my channel fully dedicated towards the Centurion 7-1. This is the third episode in the Centurion 7-1, of the Centurion 7-1, the Centurion Action 10 grind. I have already got that tank, but as you guys know, yeah, I didn't really make the video because my recording program was screwed up. But I managed to fix it, so nice, there we go. So as you can see, what's the upgrade the, towards the 7-1? Well, as you can see, it's not faster. It's still 40 kilometers an hour. What do you get, though? You get a lot of armor. Crap load of armor. This thing has got 120 millimeters of upper plate armor. It doesn't say that you don't bounce anything on the... Yeah, the don't, that you don't bounce every shot. But still, you can bounce some shots. But you shouldn't really rely on that frontal armor because it still isn't very effective. Still, you get a very good gun mantlet, but all the side armor on the turret is really weak indeed so I got penetrated a lot in the cheeks in the turret of the Chesterian 7-1 which is a bit of a shame the thing is that this tank would be so much more fun if you would just be if you would just have more reliable turret armor but unfortunately that isn't to be so, for the rest, what do you get? You get a 105mm gun, an absolutely amazing one which shoots APCR as standard ammunition. It has 390 alpha damage and it has a whopping 268mm of penetration, which is absolutely ridiculous. A very good penetration for a tier 9 tank. But what do you lose? The gun loses a lot of, yeah, reload time. Uh, DPM, as I said. So this gun reloads in roughly 10 seconds so that's a bit of a shame but of course this tank would be totally overpowered if it had a very quick reload but unfortunately that is to be so also the same issues that I had with the Centurion 1 I have with the Centurion 7 1 the gun dispersion doesn't feel that as good as the stats are saying they are so when I fully aim in a shot, sometimes the shot just goes perfectly when I, where I aim it. And sometimes the shot just goes absolutely nowhere. So that's a bit of a shame and I still don't know if that's the gun dispersion or that the stats don't just say what they really are. So that's a bit of a shame. But for the rest this tank is absolutely amazing. See that's what I meant. Not a fully aimed shot but I wasn't far away from fully aiming the shot and still it missed. Long reload time as you can see here, but I managed to reload 
could try and put a shot in, but of course it goes into the roof. That's unfortunate. So, well, I have all side shots on this tank, but this Carnarvon is preventing me from peeking out here. So I think, okay, I have to take this guy down first. So, well, I see that he is aiming at another tank, and I can put my shot clean into his lower plate. Sometimes the aim time just feels a little bit long, but I think the aim time is 2.3 seconds, which isn't that bad for a medium tank. So the Carnarvon is pulled back and hopefully the enemy will now roll into my base so that I yeah, can make some better shots happen. And that's exactly what happens. So side shot in the VK. That's good. Good side shot. As you can see, APCR is very nice to work with. <clears throat> this is my first APCR tank. Standard tank, I mean. So it was really, really nice to upgrade from AP standard to APCR standard shells because the shells just fly so much faster. It's, it's very nice to, to work with. So there's still tanks in the enemy cap circle, in my cap circle, T-34 and OHO. Both tanks are easy penetrations for me. Even the OHO with this crap load of armor, I can penetrate him. So, what premium ammo does this tank get? Normally, APCR standard tanks get heat as premium ammunition, but this tank doesn't. This tank gets hash, am hash ammunition, which basically is high explosive with an enormous penetration value, as you can see. The high explosive shells on this tank have got, yeah, the premium ones of, uh, in this case, have got 210 millimeters of penetration, which is ridiculous. You can also choose to put some uh, lower penetration hash rounds into your tank, which still have a very good penetration for normal high explosive shells. But I decide, well, if I have got two types of HG, of hash, I mean, then I will just put in the best ones so that I can use my APCR because I don't see myself use that much HG in regular games. Helping out my T54 U1 friend here. Not enough gun elevation. To help him out there, but luckily the D5041 manages to save himself. So the Oho left the cap circle, and he's right there. Can I put a shot in here? That would be nice because he's of course coming after me now. Hopefully I will be able to take him down before he manages to penetrate me. So he's still coming here, but the D5041 is behind him, so he will probably get taken out, and that's exactly what happens. Now the VKB is in a very strong position. He's got his frontal armor twerk towards me. I decide to track him there because, well, I can't really do that much about yeah that tank now. His frontal armor is extremely thick, so I won't be able to penetrate it frontally with my shells, even with this ridiculous penetration. Maybe I, if I am shooting up into the I'll, yeah the lower plate, but that wasn't the case. Now the E50M is coming after us. Hopefully he will drive in the open here so that we will have clean side shots. But that's just speculation. We can't say anything for sure here. But the VKB and the E50 go at the same time. And that's unfortunate for us. Because I can't help him out if there's two tanks together. So I have to help out my T54 E1 friend. So the tank was almost filling the entire aiming circle as you could see there. And still the shot missed. And that's the thing that I hate about the Centurion 7-1. But well, the case now, they are driving straight at me at this moment. So I hopefully will kill the E50 and I track him only. Are you serious? Oh god. I know that he will reload faster than I will. So the only thing that I can do is pull back. And now when I'm reloaded, peek out and take the kill. So in that way he didn't have a chance of putting a shot into me. But now the VK is coming after me. He's a good player. So, what can I do really now? This is going to be hard, no doubts about it. So, he misses. I decide to try and penetrate his lower plate, but it doesn't work, of course. So, what is the thing that I can do now? He is, of course, doing really well. But now the thing is, I am in a 1 versus 5 situation. He manages to put in a shot, and now I think, okay, I have to make a move. So, I track him, and I go and flank him. But, oh my god, the artillery is behind me. Oh my god, I have to use this guy as cover. Oh, <laughs> the artillery misses, luckily. 
Oh god. But the VK manages to repair his tricks. I have to face him now to bounce a shot. Luckily I do. I have to flank this guy again to take him out now. The M12 is doing his own thing. He's reloading. This VK is far more dangerous. Taking him out now. So using this wreck as cover against the M12 now. He is probably reloaded by now. But I will be able to put in a clean shot there. Luckily the enemy artillery misses. But now the thing is, there's a tortoise and they are all back here. And the thing is, what I'm going to do now might be the biggest misplay that I made during this game. But the thing is, I really needed to kill as many tanks as possible. And I thought that they were all going to uh, align here to try and put shots into me. So what I do, I go as far to the left as possible to see if I can kill the enemy artillery. But the thing is, the M12 gets spotted there, luckily. So, this is dangerous. I have to stand in the open and aim a full shot in. But now, oh my god, I luckily take him out. But the tortoise gets spotted behind me. And I am pretty much done now at this moment. But he misses! Oh my god, I've got some cover here. But the thing is, am I safe here? And for how long am I safe? The tortoise misses again. He's a very respectable player. And I can't seem to spot him from this distance. Which is unfortunate. And also the 5100 is somewhere still. And I don't know where. But the thing is I can only hope to find him. But oh my god that's the 5100. Aim the shot. Aim the shot. He did it. He doesn't spot me for some reason. And I take him down. So it's a 1 versus 1 now. But the tortoise is on a lot of health. And I think okay I can't do this anymore. The thing was I just couldn't let the tortoise really just come at me because that would be my certain demise the thing is if I had let him get towards me he would have of course yeah, taken me down for sure so the thing is I had to try and keep the tempo going and try to keep putting shots into him but of course that didn't happen and he probably penetrated the front of my turret cheek because there was almost no way this was a penetrating shot so it was a good game though let's check out the post game statistics so guys, unfortunately I wasn't able to win the 1 versus 5 engagement. I am very proud of my result though, even if I killed 4 of the 5 enemy tanks that I was fighting against. And even though this was a defeat, I still got my ace tanker badge. I even think that this was one of my first 10 games in the Centurion 7-1, which is nice. But in the rest of my games I never was able to achieve anything better than this. Well, that's not exactly true. So guys, looking at the second replay, this one has a far more happy ending. So, yeah, let's just go, as I guess. This is an amazing matchup for the Centurion 7-1, as you can see. Absolutely glorious matchup. And so, you have seen the last replay, and that was a little bit of an introduction. Now, how do you need to play this tank? Well, as I said, this tank has got one little thing to rely on, and that's the turret armor, kind of. So... This tank is a Ridgeline warrior. You always have to try and find Ridgelines. Just the same with the Centurion 1. This tank pretty much plays out exactly the same. But you've got a very more punchy gun. Enemy is hit. So that's what I like to do on Secret Line. Always this position. That's the first thing I do every single time on this situation. As you can see you can get great shots at the people there in that alleyway in the city and you can get shots up onto the right as I just shot the Speerpanzer 1C. But now as you can see there's a T95 together with the Carnarvon so it, I probably won't be able to peek there again without taking a crap load of damage. <coughs> so that's not what I do. I decide to pull back and not take the risk because yeah i rather not take that 155mm shell. So the thing is, I have to wait for the game to develop now a little bit because I can't do anything else. Okay, he foresees me, I peek out, if I put a shot in, but it hits his turret and bounces. And I luckily bounce an APCR shot from an enemy Borsig that's sitting on the hill. Yeah, why would you need gold, mate, in this matchup? But still, but still. So, as you can see, T95 and Carnarvon are still there. They both fired, fired some trying to put in a shot if I possibly can. I do, which is good, which is very nice. So, yeah, it's back to the waiting game. 
Oh yeah, I'm in the platoon with Yogurt. I saw that now because this replay is pretty old now. It's a few weeks old. Together with Yogurt and his spear plans a bit, unfortunately, he dies to the primital ball sick that's shooting APCR. So I'm thinking, okay, that position is not good anymore. I, It's pretty much a waiting game. So I'm thinking, let's go towards another position. And another very good hull down position on this map is this position here. There's always some enemy tanks in the city. So let's see if I can put some shots in. And indeed, there is. There's a T54E1 there. Let's see if I can put a shot into his cheeks there. Those are very weak. I put a shot in there and I pull back. Oho is getting shot at. Well, he doesn't really care that tank with his armor, of course. KV4 is there. Can I put a return shot in? Nice. You're not leaving without the fund, Mr. KV4 there. Yeah, the OO is just not giving a single damn here. He's just getting... He's not even getting penetrated. Can I penetrate the shot? No, I don't even hit it. That's what I mean. Sometimes the shot just goes perfectly where... Oh my god, and the OO manages to take him out with that shot. That's ridiculous. T28 prototype can easily penetrate in this tank. That's the nice thing about this much penetration. You can just penetrate the front of T28 prototypes reliably. So that's nice. Taking him out there, nice. So, almost 3,000 damage, and it's the scores are even at the moment. So I'm thinking, okay, all the enemies are wiped out in the middle for a bit, and this Carnarvon is in the open. Can I put a shot in? Yes. But unfortunately, he manages to put a shot into me as well. But I think my shot hurts a little bit more, as it has, I think, around 200 more alpha damage. But now I see the T95 in the middle there, I'm thinking, oh god, this is not going to go well. If he manages to come close to me, then this will not be good. T34 in the open there, I can easily penetrate his, yeah, his hull armor, but yeah, it just misses my shot. It hits his turret. So, picking out again to put another shot in. This time it doesn't miss, luckily. The OHO is pretty stuffed here. Nothing I can do really. I like to put as many shots into these guys as I possibly can. Uh, it was almost impossible to low roll there and to not take him out, but of course it happened. And now the T49 is going to make a move that is going to help me out a lot. The T95 turns his back towards me and I track him. This is going to be the biggest snack you could ever hope for. Just look at it. I'm just penetrating these guys through the track <laughs> as, as every time. I do not understand how you do not have a repair crew or a repair kit anymore at this tier. It just doesn't make sense. He's also a very good player and my tank has got 10 second reload. So his track repair speed must be lower than 10 seconds. Yeah, longer than 10 seconds. That's ridiculous. I managed to do 1700 damage to his entire tank this game. So I'm thinking, okay, I'm going in now. This gave me 4 here. Always trying to stay held down, as you can see. The side armor of this tank is really bad. Even side scraping would do me, won't do me good. But the thing is here, I have to give myself the biggest chance of bouncing a shot, so I am side scraping. But as you can see, the uh, KV-4 just shoots me right through. And kind of the same for the, the Canavan, which the, who does the same. And now I see that I'm getting flanked and I have to get out of the situation, but the Super Pershing tracks me. The only thing that I can hope now is that those tanks aren't coming around the corner. Unlo yeah, unfortunately for me they are. So the KV-4 is going to put in a shot. Oh no, the Canaveral is going to put in a shot. I'm tracked again. Good shot by him. So I'm now going to be held down here again. See if I can put a shot in. But I don't have enough gun depression over the back of the tank and my shot goes high and hits the turret which doesn't bounce. That's unfortunate. Are you there? Can I put a shot in? Yes, I can, if I manage to hit it. Nice. There we go. Very good damage total. We're over 6k damage already. It's absolutely amazing. So, right now, the Super Pershing is going in. He's got the health to take shots. I don't. Can I kill him with one shot? Nope, I can't. That sucks a bit. Well, Super Pershing is going in. He's got the health to take it down. I have to side scrape and try to bounce, but it doesn't bounce. So now there's only that Rheinmetall Borsig left that is shooting his APCR. So can I put a shot in? 
I have loaded Hash as you can see to do more damage to his tank but the shot goes high and misses which is unfortunate so loading another Hash round I think the Super Pre and the Leopard prototype put a shot in so now the Leopard prototype is going to do something that is going to save the game for me he's going to go straight at it to spot him and he's going to take the hits so I think okay I'm going to have to help him out now because the Borsig will if he high rolls take him out so just going to rush at him right now one more shot and the Borsig is dead and the PTA low rolls which leaves the Borsig on one health PTA is trying to flank him but it doesn't work the Borsig is on one health but luckily he remains spotted long enough for me to put the shot in and take him down what a game for this tank man 6.7k damage highest damage total I've ever gotten in this tank let's take a look at the post game statistics again just an amazing result for the Centurion 7-1 getting the H tanker badge for the second time as well as completing the medium tank mission 15 for the T28 concept I had done that already but this time with honors so guys, I think I'm going to leave this video here. I hope you enjoyed watching this video and if you did, consider please leaving a like as I did put a lot of time in making this video. Also, I now know what went wrong with my recording program. So if the problem occurs again, I know what I need to do. I hope you liked watching the third episode of the Century in Action 10 grind. I will try to finish this series as quickly as possible so that I can start making some new ones. So that really is it. Again, thank you for watching. Leave a like and subscribe if you haven't already. Guys, I will see you in the next video. Bye.